So I've been tracking what's been going on with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when it comes to the sales and if it's underperforming compared to Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy XVI, and previous big Final Fantasy games. Now usually what we get when it comes to Final Fantasy and Square Enix is that it will be about a week or two weeks or so and Square Enix will be announcing that their flagship Final Fantasy has shipped and sold this many copies. Usually we get that. With Final Fantasy VII Remake, we got the 3.5 million announcement fairly quickly final fantasy 16 we got the 3 million plus announcement fairly quickly as well and even with final fantasy 15 we got the 5 million in like one day or whatever the case it was right so usually square enix is on top of things with that but with final fantasy 7 rebirth the much anticipated sequel to the 2020 final fantasy 7 remake square enix has been radio silent on exactly how much it sold now we did get some numbers when it comes to the japanese sales that's only one part of the picture though that's not everything i did make some videos talking about that because it is significantly lower than previous final fantasy games now there is a number of factors for that which we went over when it comes to the only exclusivity right you have the playstation 5 only you have a crowded launch month there was a lot of things but now we have some other credible sources kind of chiming in at this point talking about the underperformance of final fantasy 7 rebirth and it looks like things are getting even worse for the game as it's tailing off compared to previous big final fantasy games so we're going to talk about that and a little bit more but before we get into it what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first and let's go ahead and jump right into this because we have a post from Daniel Ahmed. He is the Director of Research and Insights at Nyko Partners. He analyzes the video game market in the Asia and MENA regions, and he tweets about gaming and all of that. He's been around for a very long time, and he definitely has access to sales information, as that's what he works with normally. Now, there was a post over that was pretty popular on Twitter when someone quote tweeted somebody else and saying that people were only playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because of Tifa and Aerith in some bikini outfits, which is ridiculous because it's not even anything that crazy. People are just being weird like they always are on Twitter slash X. And then somebody just essentially quote tweeted that and then gave their own comment on it. And then Daniel chimed in underneath that. So it wasn't his own post. He essentially just saw the popular post and chimed in saying, also, not to be that guy, but Rebirth is underperforming sales-wise, not that sales performance is related to what the guy said, LOL. So very interesting post. So he's saying right there that it's underperforming sales-wise. Now somebody else asked him, hey, wait a minute, how is it performing? Care to explain or share any sources that suggest that beyond what came today, that it's peak 2.23 million active players played it. And then Daniel responded by saying, it's selling about half of what Remake sold in the same time frame and looks like it'll have weaker tail prior to any PS Plus like release. According to what source? Then he said, Equities Research Reports who are getting the data from the actual trackers. So very interesting to see the exchange back and forth on what's going on here. He says it's selling about half in the same time frame. Now from what Square Enix reported before with Final Fantasy VII Remake, we knew that game sold around 3.5 million units and then later they announced 5 million and then eventually 7 million so i'm guessing daniel's talking about that first initial announcement of 3.5 million in the first week or so whatever the case is so it's selling about half of that so we're looking at about 1.6 1.7 somewhere around there maybe 1.8 so under 2 million units for final fantasy 7 rebirth and that is absolutely not good and i think that's the main reason why square enix has not announced the sales numbers for final fantasy 7 rebirth because it is underperforming compared to what final fantasy 16 did compared to what final fantasy 7 remake did compared to what final fantasy 15 did and many of the previous big final fantasy games and it's looking like this could be one of the worst selling main final fantasy games of all time overall now we've had offshoots and spinoffs that have not done well here and there and all of that but for the most part when it comes to the big mainline final fantasy games 
This is probably the worst so far based off of the reports that I talked about before. We went over launch sales numbers and all that where Final Fantasy games would push millions of units in its first day or so and then have 10 million units plus and all that. It seems like the days of that happening, especially if you're going to have it only exclusivity on the PlayStation hardware is probably done. But there's a variety of factors why this is happening. And I think that you can point to many different things when it comes to the sales here one i would say that yes you can point to exclusivity people are going to say oh that's the main culprit and yeah maybe but then maybe not when it comes down to it right i mean there are games that can sell really good just on playstation 5 by itself like spider-man but once again spider-man is a huge massive worldwide brand that everyone kind of buys playstation for and it's synonymous with playstation at this point final fantasy i guess used to be that level at one point but it's not quite there anymore but i would say this one it's the shifting trends of the rpg market the jrpg market and the shifting trends obviously if you look at it what used to be in terms of where people were buying rpg and games where it was heavily loaded on playstation and maybe nintendo portables in the past when it comes to the final fantasy dominance that is not the case right now right now a lot of people love to play rpgs across a variety of platforms playstation the pc platform and i would say nintendo switch these are platforms where jrpgs can do really well but nintendo switch in particular has a large chunk of that base of people who do like to play JRPGs on that system. So when you don't have your Japanese RPG on that system and you have an install base of 140 million, that's so many customers, and then you have an install base of 140 million, obviously you're losing out on sales not being on there. Now, Sony has a deal with Square Enix for this, and obviously it'd be tough to even get a game as big as Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the Nintendo Switch, so I'm not saying that it should have been on there. I'm just explaining why, when it comes to the shift in the market, why the sales are lower because there are a number of people in Japan and people just in general that like to play their RPGs on PC, maybe even Steam Deck or on the Nintendo Switch, various different platforms. So that's one of the big reasons. And even if you look at what Unicorn Overlord, what that game went through when it was first planned, the developers said it was only planned for the Vita and the PlayStation 4, but due to the changing landscape of the industry they opted to make it on the nintendo switch the xbox playstation they wanted to put it out on more stuff because they knew that if you want this game to sell it's going to have to be on more than just a ps vita and the playstation 4 and that was a good idea because unicorn overlord from what i understand is selling best on the nintendo switch and you probably wouldn't have gotten those sales if they didn't do that so that's what we're seeing right now you're also seeing a overload of games on the playstation 5 platform the install base is good at this point it's definitely not bad but it's not like it's a massive install base of 100 million units plus it's just not there it's probably like around 50 something million or so not everyone's gonna buy the game and there's a ton of games to pick from and these games are 70 dollars at launch so if you're looking at it the game final fantasy 7 rebirth launched at the end of february that was in the same time frame of like a dragon infinite wealth grand blue fantasy relink and persona 3 reload plus hell divers all of those games came out right around the same time there is simply not enough users and not enough money for everyone to buy everything so people are picking and choosing what they want to get and games like like a dragon or games like persona 3 reload are reviewing really good and people are excited to play those plus a game like hell divers where you can pretty much infinitely replay and you can go ahead and get battle passes and all that stuff so people are enjoying so the money is split amongst the playstation 5 only users so i think that was a big contributing factor to why ff7 rebirth did not do as well and you also have to look at it like this maybe people played final fantasy 7 remake and didn't like it as much as the meteor didn't like it as much as the hardcore fans out there and pretty much got their fill and don't want to go on this whole three game all this different stuff spread across multiple generations you kind of have to look at all of those factors i think some people were just like you know what i'm good ff7 remake i'm fine with what they did here and maybe i'll play it later but it's not something that i need to rush out there and go play because ff7 remake ended up 
up not being something that I wanted to go rush out there and play. Now, I'm not saying that's for me. I mean, I bought FF7 Remake day one. I bought FF7 Rebirth day one. And I'm enjoying FF7 Rebirth. I just need to kind of get back on things. But I think there is a variety of factors why all of this is happening. Now, another thing that you have to also look at here, guys, is the $70 price tag. $70 is a lot for a video game and i know even in europe it's even more than 70 dollars. or in australia some of the places where the currency is a bit different so not everyone's going to want to rush out there and get the game especially if you had to have played ff7 remake first in order to kind of go along with what's happening in this game so i think people were just like you know what i'm good on that final fantasy has become a franchise that is not as relevant as it used to be there are a lot of young people who did not grow up playing final Final Fantasy like that and therefore I'm not sure if they were able to convert a lot of the people who are newer in the gaming scene that Final Fantasy is a game that you have to go out there pick up and play right away or anything it was very different from when I was growing up and Final Fantasy was the top dog around with RPGs now there are so many choices and there's so many different places to play I think that that's the problem that Final Fantasy Square Enix is running into not that they didn't make a high quality game because they did make a very high quality game it is a good game that has a lot of things going for it but i think they're also running into problems in terms of converting people and having it only on playstation 5 and kind of gatekeeping that a little bit probably isn't going to help your franchise do better especially when the dynamics of the industry when it comes to where people are buying jrpgs has shifted almost completely from what we saw before back in the day in the ps1 and the ps2 era so what do you guys think about final fantasy 7 rebirth do you feel that things might turn around a bit do you feel that square enix is panicking let me know but i also want to talk about some other remakes that are coming through and this is coming from midori when it comes to the persona 4 remake which i don't think i actually reported on but apparently she's reiterated that the persona 4 remake is coming so on twitter a user asked will we ever get a remake of persona 4 and midori responds by saying yes but please wait for a while. So it seems like it's going to be a bit before we get a Persona 4 remake. We just got Persona 3 Reload, and I don't think Atlas will be in any rush to get out the Persona 4 remake. We don't know what the schedule is going to be like for Persona 6 and what's happening there, or if there's any more spinoffs when it comes to Persona 5. I mean, they have one more coming with the mobile game or something like that, right? The Phantom X. So there's still that game. So I think they're going to space things out quite a bit. They probably have even started real development of the game just the planning phase for it they still have the dlc that's going to be released for persona 3 reload so right now we all just need to chill on that but i guess we can't really chill on that because midori has also stated that there will be persona 1 and 2 re-releases or remakes as well on twitter somebody said this persona 1 and 2 need a remake more than 4 it's not a hot take at all guys i'm pretty sure atlas knows this too let's all take a deep breath and midori responds by saying yes p1 and p2 are going to receive remakes too somebody stated praying she means remakes and not remasters and midori says to be safe i will call it updated form for right now so it could be a high-end remaster it could be a remake of persona 1 and 2 and that one excites me a bit more like those two persona 1 and 2 remakes excite me a bit more because we already got the vanilla release of persona 4 on the playstation 2 we got persona 4 golden on the ps vita we got persona 4 golden on the pc persona 4 golden on the switch playstation xbox we've already gotten the game released multiple times now at this point persona 1 and 2 have been left behind in the dust like atlas does not talk about those games it's not available to play easily on all of the newer platforms so it makes complete sense that atlas would want to bring over these games remaster them i'm not sure if it's going to be a full high-end remake like they did with persona 3 reload i don't know if atlas is going to invest that type of money so i'm guessing it's going to be some type of hybrid or high-end remaster where they do kind of retweak and redo some of the things but a lot of the base game is kept intact when it comes to the budget and everything that they're going to put into this i just don't see them putting in vast amounts of money 
to remake Persona 1 and 2, not knowing if that's going to be a hit with the fans because people love the whole social links and all that type of stuff. And Persona 1 and 2 are not that. They definitely have more of a vibe of like the Shin Megami Tensei games, the old school ones back in the day, which it was a spinoff from there with some slight twists here and there in terms of how things work. So I do feel that Persona 1 and 2 are definitely going to get remade and it's going to be good once they do release them. Atlas has done a good job with their re-releases. They do a lot of re-releases, but they've done a good job with the ones that they do bring out. So we'll see what happens in the future. So that's going to wrap it up for this video here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.